You know, one day I was at home and I heard my brother and his mate talking outside. And they were talking about a battleship at school. I'm inside the house, I'm like, hey, there's no battleship at school. If there was a battleship at school, I would know. So I went outside. I went up to my brother and his mate. I said, what are you fellas talking about? And my brother, he looked at me and said, we're talking about our teacher. We call her the battleship. <laughs> Whoa. He said, yeah, because she's real mean and tough. So we call her the battleship. And I'm like, do you say that to her face? They go, him and his mate, they both go, no, no. You don't say it to her face? Then they both looked at me and they said, don't you say it to me? I was the wrong person to say that to. A few days later, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. The bell is gone, it's home time. We were all lined up to go on the buses to go home. Mrs. Battersby is on bus duty. She's making sure that we get on the buses in an orderly fashion. I am the last person to get on the bus. When I get on the bus, I see my uncle, the bus driver. Always nice to see my uncle. I walk down the bus aisle. There's no more seats. I have to stand. My uncle starts the bus engine, closes the bus door, and starts to move the bus forward. Mrs. Battersby turns around and starts to walk back into the school. I think, I'll be funny. So I yelled out, see a battleship? <laughs> All the kids on the bus go, Ooh. Mrs. Battersby turns around, stop that bus. My uncle stops the bus. I'm like, no, no, uncle, don't stop the bus. <laughs> My uncle opens the door, Mrs. Battersby gets on the bus. Who said that? All the kids look at me. Mrs. Battersby says, you get off this bus now. I walk down the bus aisle to get off the bus. As I'm walking down the bus aisle, I go past my brother and his mate. They're sitting in their seat. They're looking at me. They're saying to me, you be quiet, man. Don't you tell her we told you that name. You be quiet. Don't you tell her we call her the battleship. You shut up to me. I keep walking. Then I see my uncle, the bus driver. He's smiling at me. <laughs> He's like, you're on your own with this one, boy. <laughs> I get off the bus. Mrs. Battersby makes me stand in front of her. Who told you that name? I look over Mrs. Battersby's shoulder. I can see back on the bus. My brother and his mate, they're not sitting down anymore. They're standing up. They're at the window. They're like this. <laughs> Mrs. Battersby goes, come on, who told you that name? Oh, my brother and his mate. <laughs> Mrs. Battersby gets back on the bus. You two, get off this bus now. Oh, did we get a big telling off. Two years later, I end up in Mrs. Battersby's class. <laughs> but there's a bit more to this, Mrs. Battersby. One day I'm sitting on the mat, and I'm looking at this boy who's sitting next to me. He's sitting just a little bit in front of me. Now this boy was different from me. He always came to school in nice clothes. We didn't have uniforms, but he always came to school in nice clothes. He had nice lunches. He did really well in the classroom, and everybody liked him. So I'm sitting there, I'm staring at him. And he notices me looking and he goes, What? And I go, Oh, nothing, nothing. He goes back to looking at the front, waiting for the teacher. And I go back to looking at him. And then he goes, What are you looking at? And I said, I looked at him and I was serious. And I said, Does your dad hit you? And he goes, Hey? Eh? 
I said, your dad. Does your dad hit you? And he goes, what do you mean? And I said, you know, hit you. And he goes, no, my dad doesn't do that. He looked at me and he said, does your dad do that to you? I said, oh, yeah. And I lifted up my shirt because my dad had hit me really hard. He hit me hard in the arm and a big lump had come up under my arm. I had this huge lump under my arm from where he hit me. I was worried. I thought something was happening to my body. I thought another arm was trying to grow out of something. <laughs> so I showed it to my mate. I said, I said, yeah, look at this. My dad hit me hard. This big lump has come up under my arm. I said to the boy, do you have a lump like that under your arm? He goes, no. I said, do you think that lump's supposed to be there? He goes, no. He said, you should tell someone about that. You should tell the teacher. I put down my top quicker. I said, no, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anyone. Then the teacher came. We forgot all about it. And then the bell rang. We all went outside for morning tea. When the bell rang again, we all went back inside into the classroom. I went back into the classroom and I sat in my seat and I watched all the other kids coming back to the class. I kept watching the windows and the doors. I kept watching all the kids come back in and sit in their seats. But that boy I told, he doesn't come back to class. I still feel my heart starting to beat a bit faster. I'm thinking to myself, where's that boy I told? And I think to myself, now he wouldn't tell anybody. I told him not to. Then the door at the back of the classroom opens. Mrs. Battersby walks in. And behind her is that boy. He's told her. Mrs. Battersby looks over at me. Timothy, come with me, please. I'm like... Oh. I get up from my seat. I start to follow Mrs. Battersby and the boy out of the classroom. As I'm following them out of the classroom, I think to myself, I'm going to lie. I'm going to lie. I'm going to say, Miss, I don't know what that boy's talking about. He's making up stories. I never said that. I'm going to lie. I follow Mrs. Battersby and the boy out into the, uh, into the foyer, into the hallway. Mrs. Battersby gets me to, there. She gets me to stand up against the wall. I'm standing there. She's standing in front of me. The boy's standing beside her. They're both standing there looking at me. I don't know where to look. I'm like... And then Mrs. Battersby goes, lift up your shirt. All of a sudden, I've got no ears. I'm like, hey, what? Mrs. Battersby goes, Timothy, lift up your shirt. So I lift up my shirt and Mrs. Battersby sees the big lump under my arm. She sees the bruising and then she bursts into tears. And I'm not talking quiet tears. No, no, no. Mrs. Battersby goes, <laughs> like that. And then she hugs me. <laughs> now Mrs. Battersby was not a little woman. Mrs. Batsby was a big woman. <laughs> and she's hugging me and squeezing me. And she's walking back and forth. <laughs> now at this point I'm feeling two things. Number one, really uncomfortable. <laughs> and then the second thing that I'm feeling is I feel a voice coming up inside of me. And this voice is saying, it's not right, Tim. What's happening at home is not right. And that voice never went away. And then the worst thing happened. The worst thing. Mrs. Battersby steps back at me, steps back from me. She's wiping her eyes. And she says to me, Timothy, I want you to go back into the classroom. 
and I want you to pick up your desk, and I want you to put your desk next to mine. <laughs> I... <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> so I go back in the bus and <laughs> pick up my desk. <laughs> All the other kids are looking at me, they're like, Oh, Timothy must be in so much trouble. I carry my desk over next to Mrs. Battersby. I put my desk down, sit down. <laughs> Mrs. Battersby walks back into the classroom, still wiping her eyes. She sits in her desk. She looks over at me. You right there, Timothy? <laughs> then I took the position. I took the position I did. This is my position I used throughout my whole school life. I put my arm over my work like this so nobody can see. And I stick my head down and I move my pen to look busy. I didn't know what I was doing, just look busy. This was my message to teachers. Move along, nothing to see here. Just move along. Go see the noisy ones over there. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> and Mrs. Battersby. What she liked to do is scan the classroom. And she'd always start from this side. And she'd run her eyes over the class, making sure everybody was doing what they were supposed to be doing. And then her eyes would come all the way around to me. <laughs> and Mrs. Battersby goes, and then she goes, bring me your book so I can have a look at your work. Oh. So I get up from my chair, I get my book, it's all over now. I walk over to Mrs. Battersby and give her my book. Mrs. Battersby takes my book. She places it on her desk and then she smooths it out like it's something precious. Then Mrs. Battersby puts an arm around me like this. She pulls me in close and she gently takes me through my room. I'm like, well, this is not so bad. Mrs. Battersby, eh? I was lucky. I was a boy at school and I had a battleship on my side. Now that was Mrs. Battersby's last year. At the end of that year, she retired. On the last day, the girls, they got together and they made Mrs. Battersby a pretty card. And they let everybody else sign it. Everybody except me. I went up to sign their card. The girls are like, no, you're not signing our card. You're a naughty boy. Mrs. Battersby doesn't like naughty boys. I got angry. In my hand, I had this big rubber doorstop. I had found it laying around outside in the school. And I'd been holding on to it all day. And when those girls said that to me, I felt angry. So I threw it. I threw it as hard as I could at the wall. It went into the wall. <laughs> it made a big hole. All the kids are like, Ooh. Later on, Mrs. Battersby comes back to the classroom. The girls run up to her, Mrs. Battersby, Mrs. Battersby, look what Timothy did. <laughs> Mrs. Battersby looks at the hole, she looks at me, I'm standing there, I'm like, I let Mrs. Battersby down, she's so nice to me, this is how she's going to remember me. Mrs. Battersby goes, Timothy, come here. So I walk up to her, as I'm walking up to her, all the other kids are watching, they're like, oh man, he's going to get it from the battleship. I walk up to Mrs. Battersby and what does she do? She hugs me and cries. She hugs me and cries. The other kids are like, hey, 